Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's open forum. Uh, my name is Ryan Langley, uh, Director of Sales. I'm your host today, and I'll be presenting. Um, if you're looking at your screen now, you'll see an email that uh, that we all received this morning. Those of us who are uh, Florida Realtors received this morning. Um, consumer confidence remains steady. I got this at 7, 17 a.m. Um, there's a link on here that you'll want to click. Um, if you got this email, if not, I'm going to show you what it says and it takes you here and this will show you all the stuff going on, everything that NAR has put out since this uh, settlement, um, including a settlement briefing. Um, there's a one with a legal uh, expert or one of their lawyers. Um, there's going to be another one tomorrow at 10 a.m. from there. That's also there's a link to that on there as well um, on that email. Um, uh, President Biden weighed in on this whole thing, and we're going to go over that in just a second. Um, and then the the actual press release from when the uh, when the settlement was announced. Um, this is so we're going to go through this, but one of the one of the legal ones I sat through with the NAR lawyer says uh, they gave a timeline for uh, what has happened. They announced this uh, settlement on March fifteenth. Uh, by the end of this month, probably right around now, they're submitting uh, the settlement. It's all in writing and they're submitting it to the Department of Justice for approval. Um, that takes at least six months um, is what they're what they're saying. But in July is when the changes are going to be enacted. Um, we will be expected to comply by a month after that. Uh, looks like mid to late August. We'll all be expected to comply with those changes. Um, I think you'll see the changes on uh, MLS, but then it'll be absolutely mandatory by, you know, to, to come into compliance a month later. Um, to answer your questions on that before you even ask them, we don't know what that looks like as far as you have an ongoing listing that you sign up on June 15th and it still isn't sold by July 15th or August 15th. Um, you probably, uh, do you need a new listing agreement? Do you need all that stuff? We don't know yet. Um, we're all waiting to hear about all of that stuff. Um, and we'll talk about some of the other stuff as well. Um, you know, wh wh where, where did this start and what has come of it? I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to reiterate this one more time before we go into, it. I'm not going to get into the political aspect of it. Other, well, the political aspect, yes, but not into politics or, or, or particular politicians. Um, but, uh, or, or too much into attorneys. Um, this whole thing started as an attorney opportunity to, um, to make some money and that's where it's come there was you know i i sat through the nar the nar presentation and then i heard uh, another local real estate attorney uh i sat through a presentation yesterday um on it and you know they were praising nar and nar was praising themselves for getting you all out of liability all of us out of liability you know this is a big thing because it can keep us all from being sick. we weren't doing anything wrong um you know, so it's it's a very interesting. Yeah, yes, there's if the government decides later that there's liability, then there's liability, I suppose. But we weren't doing anything wrong, and so um, there's a lot of a lot of that kind of stuff out there. Um, people covering themselves for whatever settlement decisions they made, which is perfectly fine. So we're going to talk a little bit about what these mean, uh, and we're going to talk about more importantly how we're going to deal with them. So it is not the the uh, I will tell you now it is not the death sentence that uh, that people are acting like overreacting. It is not a negative cloud hanging over the industry. We're going to be just fine. Um, and we're going to talk about how we're going to deal with it. First, let me go into first, let me go into a uh, to what the president of the United States, not the president of NAR, the president of the United States weighed in on this. Um, and I am not going to go into politics. Uh, please save all of your political comments. I'm just going to go into what he said. Uh, this is four days after, this is a speech in Las Vegas, four days after the uh, settlement was announced. Um, he's talking about refinancing. Uh, he's going to, the federal, um, federally funded mortgages, uh, he's going to save folks up to $1,500 on refinancing because um, he knows people are going to refinance. Everybody knows that, right? Um, when, the, when rates do come down, everybody who's bought in the last, you know, two years. Um, on a typical home purchase, I could say, okay. Oh, okay. In addition, last week, the NAR agreed for the first time that Americans can negotiate lower commissions when they buy or sell their home. People applauded that. Um, on a typical home purchase, I could save folks an average of $10,000. 
I'm calling on realtors to follow through on lowering their commissions to protect home buyers. So um, nothing in this paragraph is, well, maybe the 10,000, I don't know that if that's a typical or not, but nothing in this paragraph is, nothing in these three paragraphs is true. Uh, and I'm not picking on this particular politician. This is what the government does when they don't understand something. Our, our uh, commissions, as you all know, have always been negotiated. I mean, have you ever just gone in and everybody just agrees to everything? It uh, doesn't happen all the time, right? And uh, calling on realtors to follow through on lowering their commissions to protect home buyers. Um, I'm calling on politicians to lower their salaries. Yeah, that's that's absolute nonsense while the price of everything else goes up. I'm not going to get into politics. That is all I'm going to say. Politicians get, you know, we're from the government and we're here to help. They get involved in industries that they don't know. He doesn't know anything about this. He doesn't even know that, and not him, his advisors, everyone doesn't know that these could always been, they just say things that sound good. And both sides, every, every side, every politician just say things that sound good. And they don't understand so just keep that in mind when all the other industries they talk about the coal industry or the this industry or that industry that they're probably doing things they don't know about and just trying to make it sound good to the voters uh because that's all they care about and that's not just this president it's all the presidents all the everybody so uh that's all the politics i'm going to talk about and only because it's relevant to us and that you see what we're up against out there now how do we that's terrible ryan how are we going to deal with that Oh my gosh, guys, I didn't share my screen this whole time with you um, on that. Um, I was reading it to you, but I didn't share it with you. Um, but here it is for you. And this is the part I talked about. Um, I'm calling on, on the bottom, you see, I'm calling on all realtors to on realtors to follow through on lowering their commissions to protect home buyers. Now, does this legislation protect home buyers at all? Absolutely not. It's absolutely worse for home buyers. They're either gonna have to, to pay the commission out of their pocket, which means they can buy less house, which doesn't help sellers either, but uh, I'm gonna stay out of that for now. Uh, not only does it, but they're gonna, if they don't wanna pay their realtor or they can't afford to pay their realtor, they're going to have to deal with the listing agent. They're not going to be represented on the home purchase. I mean, I, you know, you guys aren't going to work for free. We're not going to, you know, go out there and represent buyers for free. Absolutely not. Which is the, which we'll get into. We're absolutely not going to work for free. So they're going to go directly to the listing agent. Now I want you to think about when you're the listing agent, what kind of people do you represent? Who do you represent when you're the listing agent? Anybody? Somebody just type sellers, sellers, sellers. But what what are these sellers to you? Um, customers, friends, family, um, clients. There you go. Friends, clients. friends, family, family. long time clients. Do you love clients. and do you love and and cherish those people? Caroline, sometimes, <laughs> you're sometimes. Sell, you're sellers. <laughs> you typically you you appreciate them, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. They're your lifeblood of your business, right? Yeah, they're our pain. Those clients. are the best things you can get as sellers. You love them, right, Mike? Right. Right. Who are you going to treat better? Just, I know that you guys are all completely ethical and fair, and we're all, you know, you don't have a favorite kid, you don't have, you know, all this stuff. But who do you treat better? Someone who you've known for 20 years and your best client, or your cousin, or your, your mother, or yourself, your own house, or someone who calls off a sign on the street? or someone I, who, oh. you're always gonna treat your, I mean, that's just natural. You're you're there to protect your clients, right? I mean, that's what you do, that's what we've always done, that's what we've always been trained to do. And now you've got people come up through. So we've always talked about this when we talk about, um, when we talk about transaction brokerage and how, you know, you represent both sides, but are, you know, you really just want the deal to go through because you're getting both, now you're getting 6% instead of 3% or five instead of two and a half, whatever it is. So, you know, realtors really want those deals to go through and they make it, you guys have always accused, anytime you had a good offer that didn't get accepted, you accuse that agent of, of taking it, you know, their own deal. Um, you know, so that's always been been going on and there's always been ethics problems with that. And now that's what everybody's gonna have to deal with if they don't use a realtor. And now these buyers are going to have to pay out of their pocket. I'm just pointing out that people, including the president of the United States, who you assume has advisors and people who know about everything, 
don't understand our industry. They don't understand how this is bad, or they don't care because it makes a good sound bite uh, to get votes. So it's, it, and again, I'm not getting political. It's not this president. It's every politician ever. So um, just to be fair, just to note, show you what you're up against. Now, there's some great things. Tammy, do you want to uh, go ahead and ask your question, Tammy? Well, I doubt the listing agent's going to work for free either, you know, even though they go right to the listing agent. Do you think they're working for free or are they going to charge that buyer? Well, they got to charge the seller just like they did before. I mean, we're going to talk about what we're going to do with our listing agreements. Um, I think I, I think you guys still, I, if you do less than 6%, that's on you. I mean, if that's what you want to do, I don't, I don't know how it's going to actually play out, but I know what we're going to try to do. And I know what, I, I know what from the buyer side we're going to try to do. Um, but from the seller side, I think you do the same thing that, that a lot of you have been doing, which is if I get both sides, it's this much. And if I just represent you, it's this much, you know, um, I think that, you know, if I, it is more work, I've got to go open the house for them. I've got to show them the house. I've got to do, if they're calling off my Zillow, you know, my listing, they saw it on Zillow and they're calling directly. I've got to go let them in the house. I've got to go. I'm still not just giving them a lockbox code. They're still, I don't know them. They're not professional realtors or, or professional real estate agents. I'm not letting them in a, in a house. Um, I mean, I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm not letting them just go in a house. I'm going to go there and, and walk them through the house, sell the house to them. I'm going to write their contract for them. I'm going to set up their inspection for them, their appraisal for them. I, I mean, you guys, we went over the list last week of the 184 things that you guys do. You know, I'm going to do those things for them. And so, yeah, that's what my commission is going to be. If I have to handle both sides of this. Um, and then again, we're talking about, you know, uh, when I do that, I am making more money. I do want that deal to go through more than I want. If Mike brings me a client, I want my own deal to go through more than I want Mike to bring me a client because now I'm paying him 3%, right? Because he's going to put that, which we're going to talk about. Now I'm paying him 3%. And so there's a, there's a roof issue. And I know my seller will probably contribute $2,500 toward that. And the, it might be a $10,000 issue. And I tell my client, the buyer, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. They'll give you $2,500. You know, they're, they're just not being represented properly. Um, cause I want that deal to go through. Go ahead, Tim. Um, <clears throat> so I had a lady call me this week on one of my listings and she kept wanting to put an offer in saying that it's going to be $13,000 less because I don't have an agent and, um, but I don't know who is writing up her. I, I mean, I ended up writing up her contract and was going to do both sides of the deal. Um, but it's kind of the same sort of thing. These people call you. I don't really know how to handle a situation like that where she kept pounding me that she had no agent and she should get a way less price because she wasn't, you know, the seller wasn't paying um, a buyer's agent because she had no agent. Okay. And I was a listing agent. Well, she, she, she gets the same doing? price. Uh, the way that's always worked before and the way we educated our buyers before was, uh, you know, the seller's paying for this. You're not. You can you get representation pretty much for free and until july the middle of july that's the way it is but she wanted a reduced price because she, well, she can want yeah. whatever she wants yeah um but that doesn't mean you it doesn't mean it's you know uh, if i go buy a new car and say oh i'm only gonna drive it on weekends they don't give me a discount exactly you know? so no um uh, so you just present her offer like everybody else <laughs> i mean it doesn't matter you know you write it up for her and you get both sides tough luck um, or, you know, I don't know what the $13,000 is at, it, probably not 3%. Um, she was, who, she doesn't know because my, it's my agreement with the seller. She didn't know what how much was the house. Uh, the house was, um, uh, four, four sixty. So where did she get 13? Um, I don't know, but yeah. maybe two, two and a half percent, something like that. But anyway, um, you know, tell her, uh, I'll represent you and I'll give you 5,000 back at closing or whatever if you want you know just do whatever you want but okay. you can't but so the, the the seller still has to pay their their whole six their, or whatever you have them for right exactly all right carolina i got um i don't know if everybody else did i'm sure they did i can't 
you know, I'm bombarded with emails from Orlando Realtor Association, NAR to become a buyer's be agent. What do we need? Do we, I'm just too overwhelmed with all of this. And I like to keep it simple, do my thing and, and, um, and sell because I can't focus on all of this. Okay, but good. what do you recommend with all of this? It's just really about the buyer's agent getting paid. Bottom that's, what line. This is about. That's, what, that's what this class is going to be about. Uh, save your question for the end. I'm sure you'll have more. I'm sure I'll say something that'll make you have more questions. So, oh, uh, okay. So this is, this is guys, the, the, I will, I will cover this briefly. The, let me stop. Um, the main thing to come out of this guys is that you are not allowed to put um not allowed to put compensation offers on mls no you can't do it as an attachment um they have not really talked about what you can uh, you won't be able to do it in realtor remarks uh, straight out and say you know co-broking or uh, comp uh, cooperating brokers get this or anything like that did you see um, where it said you could put it on your they did come out with something that you can put it on your personal web page if you're the listing agent yeah yeah and we're going to talk about that not put it on a third party uh, like platform right. it seems so zillow, zillow won't have it or whatever yeah right? but i mean even so, if we created something for that it so didn't i'm going to tell you why that doesn't matter so I've sat in these classes and I listen to people talk about their personal web page, their, you know, their business pages and all those their, their web pages and how they're going to have listings on there. And if I have your listing IDX on mine, Tammy, I can't, well, I will because you're FRI, I probably can't. But if you were uh, a Keller Williams agent, I couldn't have your, uh, you know, offering two and a half, three percent, whatever it is, right? Here's why that doesn't matter. If I'm representing a buyer, I'm not looking about your web page. I saw it on MLS. I'm writing you an offer, and my offer says three percent goes to Florida Realty Investments for Ryan Langley. That's what it says to pay what my buyer owes me per my buyer brokerage agreement. I don't care if you're offering one and a half percent. This is this is freedom, guys. This is not your two percent minus three ninety five MLS fee anymore, right? This is not that. You don't have to be bound by that. You don't have to complain about that. We will never see another complaint about. They took three and a half and gave me two and a half. We'll never see another complaint about why am I paying 295 MLS fee? What's an MLS fee? Which is nothing, by the way. I'm not, I'm, it's, yeah, I got to pay the MLS. And if I sell four houses at 295, that'll probably do it. So, I mean, that's what the MLS fee is, right? So it's, it, it's nothing. We're not bound by that anymore. This is freedom. And this is going to be on every offer that you guys write. You're not working for free. And you're asking for three percent. You want to be cheap and not offer anything on the other side? Then fine. You might check out their website, see if maybe they're offering over three percent, but otherwise three percent. You are also bound by your buyer brokerage agreement to not make more than what your buyer brokerage agreement says from the buyer. But from the seller, you can get all you want. I can get twenty percent from the seller if I want. My buyer cannot pay me more than what the buyer brokerage agreement says. So if I have 3% with, with the buyer family, John and Maria from last week, if I have 3% on my buyer brokerage agreement with them and Daryl's got a property that's been on the market 150 days. And I say, you know what? I bet Daryl's dying to sell that. And he tells me seller's really motivated. Well, guess what? We're going to pay for that. And I want 5% for Florida Realty Investments. Daryl's client can take it or leave it. Or, or negotiate it, right? They can say, no, we'll do three or whatever. But that's up to me now to negotiate and decide what I'm worth and what my offer is worth. Now, am I best representing my buyer if I put that five on there and Daryl comes back and says, no, they'll do three though and whatever. And I say, well, forget it. No, I can't do that because my buyer broker agreement says three with them. I can say, I won't, I can not negotiate for less than three because that's what my buyer owes me. And I'm doing the best I can for my buyer. If I cover what they owe me, I'm trying to get the seller to cover what they owe me. I'm doing the best I can for my buyer. Okay. Assuming my buyer doesn't want to come out of pocket for this, you know, we'll talk about that or whatever, but I'm doing the best I can for my buyer when I negotiate what's on my agreement. Okay. So if Daryl's client gives me, gives me pushback about the 5%, then I've got to drop it through. Um, I can't, I can't mess my client up for that you know for me being a little greedy on two percent but but i can't be aggressive on those things you know 
So that's something to, to keep in mind, including when you're representing your, yourself. I don't know why you would do that other than to get, you know, less cash, cash to closing if you're, uh, if you're financing it. So, um, you know, it's just a bigger concession. But make sure the lender will allow that too if you're the buyer. But I'm not going to get into that. But for your buyer, you do want to make sure you're, the lenders. Uh, on uh, we went through this um, when we had on Monday when we had Paul on here um, from Samaritan. We talked about notifying uh, your lender right away of what your buyer owes you, right? What your buyer brokerage agreement says, and you guys are all going to be using a buyer brokerage agreement, a showing agreement a uh some kind of agreement that says what they owe you it will change it looks like they're already making changes to it the uh the legal presentation i saw yesterday uh was somebody that's in the know with uh with farbar and they said they're already looking at making changes to it so um there definitely will be changes to it uh there will be changes to the listing agreement too obviously where you can't uh where you can put it on the mls without offering uh anything to a cooperating broker um i obviously the listing agreement is going to change but it will still, I'm sure it'll still have something where we're offering to another broker. We just can't put it on MLS. But instead of must have something to put on MLS, it'll now say can't put on MLS, cannot advertise on MLS, uh, or, or it won't say anything because we know the rules. Um, so what I'm telling you guys, this is what I'm talking about, attacking. Attack this, guys. This is, I want 3%. That's what's going to be in my offers. I don't care what's on your stupid website. You can put on there that you're offering 1%, 2%, whatever it is, unless it says more than 3%, I'm not interested because I'm asking for 3%. No more complaining about what people offer you in the uh, compensation in the MLS. Um, uh, Carolina, Daryl, Carolina, go ahead. Um, so are you saying that if I have a buyer I do a buyer broker agreement. The buyer is responsible for paying. However, when I do an offer, I negotiate with the listing agent and then the listing agent will then present it to the seller because what I'm not understanding is if I'm the listing agent, I'm going to charge 6% as let's say a listing agreement. So I was thinking with that, when I get an offer, I can pay the agent. So what I'm just a little confused in that aspect because I'm not. So the seller is still going to pay my commission is what it's I don't, I don't. So the, the freedom this has given us now is we can never negotiate MLS commissions before. You guys remember that MLS offers a compensation. We're final. You agree right. ethical, uh, ethical jail. If you if you negotiated, if you wrote next to your name down at the bottom, uh, you know, Carolina Estevez, 3%, right? right. Or you put it in there somewhere because you could not negotiate that because it was an MLS and you were a realtor. Um, now you can uh, put it, I, I would not negotiate. I'm not calling Tammy to see what her client's offering. I'm sending Tammy an offer that says 3%. Okay. On the bottom where it says other or when they change. Uh, you the can put it, uh, we'll, we can talk about where to put it but it, that's what it's going to say. I, I imagine I would do it in additional terms for right now. Um, I don't know if it'll ever change where there's a, where there's more of a place for, for concessions or not. Um, there, you know, there's just those little lines up at the top on page three or four that have a, a place where people try to sneak in the 3% for seller concessions. Um, and that may be the place to do it. And you put it under there, seller 3% for buyer brokerage. So my question is, the issue then becomes the MLS, you can't put, you know, compensation on the MLS, but wasn't the issue that the seller did not want to pay the buyer. So how would this then be any different? Because me, the buyer's agent, I'm asking for compensation and the seller is still going to have to pay me. But we did, we did not, nothing changed here the, about sellers paying buyers brokers. Okay. We used to have to offer $1 to put it on MLS. Now we can offer nothing. We can't mention it at all. That is all that's changed. This is not really a bunch of mad sellers. Okay. This is a bunch of lawyers. Okay. We've got a bunch of people that started a class action. This is a class action suit, by the way. Uh, have any of you been asked to join the class action suit? Anybody raise your hand if you've been asked to join it. Uh, everybody who sold a property, if you sold a property on the MLS in the last six years and paid a buyer's broker, if you were the actual seller and you paid the buyer's brokerage, side which you all probably did uh even if you were the, 
even if you were the one who wrote the listing agreement, who took advantage of yourself, you can be part of this class action suit. You either opt in or you opt out or you do nothing and you get nothing. If you opt in, you're going to get, you know, $42. If your share of the, of the, what, how many ever millions they got, um, you're going to get 42 bucks or I'm, I'm making that up. Could be anything. Um, could be $12, could be $104. I have no idea. If you opt out, then you can sue on your own. Um, it'll be more expensive than you'll ever get. You can try to get back that, you know, the $11,000 that you paid, but no lawyer is working for that. And you're going to have to pay a lawyer and do all that stuff. So, uh, you know, lawyers get about a third of this. They're not working for a third of $11,000. Um, or you can, uh, do nothing, which you get nothing and that's it. Uh, for instance, I've sold two properties in the last six years, both of them off of MLS. So I, I, I'm not getting asked to join. So I really was wondering if you guys have gotten any mail and been asked to join. I've been asked to join the Camp Lejeune thing a bunch of times, um, and mesothelioma, but never, uh, never did. <laughs> so, so I don't know. I, you think it'd be very popular though. Um, but, uh, to get back to that. So the only thing has changed $1. We used to have to, uh, to, thing so i don't know how this suit got so out of hand we went over this on monday this i don't know how the suit got out of hand it should have been everybody should the liability should be limited to a dollar because that's the only thing that they've changed you had to offer a dollar you were offering three percent to the other side you only had to offer them a dollar to put it on mls i don't know where the huge thing was you chose to offer three percent they said that we colluded um and that everybody was doing three percent or two and a half percent or whatever and it, it's just it nonsense or not it is what it is, and now we have to deal with it. But this is I, I, this the whole point of this thing, guys, is this is a time to shine. And what you do have to do, though, uh, to do the things that I'm telling you is you do have to prove your value. You do have to show your value. Um, and we'll talk about, uh, I, want, I want you guys to put together buyer presentation packages. I think you should um, put together buyer presentation packages. So, um, and, and these buyer brokerage agreements, just so you guys know, mandatory. And I think that believes from what I've, kind of heard yesterday from the legal person that's kind of hooked up at FAR is before you show it, like before you do anything, before you meet them at a house, or maybe when you meet them at that first house, you have the agreement there. Um, and I don't know what the new agreement's going to look like. Is it going to have all the details of what they were looking for in the house and all that stuff? I don't know. Um, but you should have them pre-qualified before you meet them at a house and have them sign one of these when they get there, whatever you want, you can have it in your hand and scan it later, whatever you want to do. Um, but how are they going to know that we have this, Ryan? Are we going to have to submit it with an offer? No, you don't have to submit it with your offer. No, you don't have to submit it to the title company. The title company is going to do the same thing. They're going to ask you just like they do now. They ask the listing agent, right? What are the splits on this? Um, they're going to ask you the same thing as a buyer. They're going to ask the listing agent separately and the buyer's agent separately. You know, what are you getting here? Um, and they're not going to ask you for your agreement. They don't care about compliance. They're title companies. They just want to know where the money's getting split up and how to do that, who, where, where you're getting it, where it's coming from. Um, so that'll be a little more challenging for them to decide where all the money's coming from. But because um, yeah, right now it just comes from the seller, right? They just cut it up to the sides. So, um, sorry, Daryl. Yes, sir. Hey, I kind of wish that the commissions were no negotiated like the last day before closing or closing day because you don't know how hard a deal is going to be until the day of closing. It could be totally awful deal and you're not asking enough. You never ask enough to begin with. Just like just like um, Tammy just said, her, her buyers asking for part of the commission back. And I'm like, you know, you want to ask more than <laughs> what's normal for her because she's going to be a pain in the butt. So that's my thought. Mm -hmm. She sounds like somebody who just saw the news and thought she can get a discount uh, from now as a buyer. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't wait till the last minute. You know what happens to realtors at the last minute, right? Nothing good. Nobody has ever gotten more money at closing than they thought they were getting that morning. Everybody gets less, if anything, because you have to buy a washer or a dryer or this or that, right? So nobody ever get, or the deal's going to fall apart. I got more the other day, totally unexpectedly. <laughs> was it a mathematical error on your part, Tammy? No, there was leftover um, money from the the closing cost, and they were going to go back to the seller, but they went to me. Okay, good job. Well, I stand corrected. You do sometimes get more money. Um, 
<laughs> John. John Korea. Sorry, I had to put my microphone on. Uh, <clears throat> yes, Ryan, and, and you know, I'm, with everything we've been going over, I have a listing that will be going active on Monday. Um, and I've negotiated with this, this seller everything already and have it in writing. In fact, had it in writing uh, for a few weeks now, uh, but we had pushed back the date that we were going to put it on the market. And I just want to be uh, sure that because uh, of all the dates, nothing will have changed when this listing goes in because uh, it's not July yet. And the final uh, decision by the judge still has not gone into effect. So our normal rules of me offering uh, compensation in, in the MLS are still in effect. Are, are you're asking, yes, absolutely. In fact, you can't, it's still the same. You can't list it without offering com compensation to right now. Yes, so, I, just, I just wanted to like be sure. It was a month ago or a year ago. <clears throat> I just like wanted to be sure that, yeah, uh, like I said, it's going, going to go active on Monday and then hopefully sell quickly because then they're going to turn around and buy something else. We have three and a half to four months of, of the same market. So keep doing things the way you're doing. Okay, thank you. You bet. So nothing has changed yet. They won't let you put an MLS without offering compensation, just like they wouldn't a couple of weeks ago. They they still won't. Um, uh, Monica. Yeah, so, um, so if I'm a listing agent and I signed, let's say just hypothetically a uh, listing at 5% commission, and then a buyer's agent comes presents an offer and he has a buyer's broker agreement for three percent commission and let's say if it's a difficult sell like how do you go about it in that case i mean okay, um, okay. your your listing agreement is still going to say um two and a half and two and a half okay or let's say what, whatever it says it's still going to offer compensation at five percent or six percent or whatever you have okay let's say like your example five percent mm -hmm. it's still going to have that you're offering two and a half to the other side okay. okay which means you're getting two and a half so in that case you would still be due two and a half and the seller would have to decide if they like that offer enough to go to three for the other person which means another half percent for them or if they want you to re respond with offering them two and a half like they said like your agreement says that your agreement does not hold that. And I think this, I think the listing agreement will say something about that. Like, you know, these are, these are subject to change, these cooperating broker things. Okay. I, I'm not sure what it's going to say yet. That's a good question. Really good question. But I'm not sure what it's going to say, but it's definitely going to be up to the seller to say, uh, yeah, I'm still going to pay you the two and a half percent that I owe you, Monica, but I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to pay Mike, uh, 3%. We were offering two and a half. He can take that or leave it. I, I'm not paying another dime. Or they can say, yeah, maybe if they want to pay another five hundred dollars for the place, or another thousand if they want to go up two thousand, whatever it is, right? Or whatever. I mean, they can respond however they want, but you're still doing your two and a half. You're not cutting your commission. It's you're still doing the two and a half that you was not cooperating. Understood. Okay, thank you. But the two and a half that's in your agreement that was going to cooperate is now going to go toward that three percent they're asking for, or that might, you know. If Mike presents that offer and 3% is what his buyer brokerage agreement says, and he offers you 3% or he offers, he sends in an offer with him getting 3% and you come back at two and a half, he can take it or leave that along with the buyer. Got it. And he can tell his buyer, now, now Mike can tell his buyer, look, you guys are going to owe me another, you know, $4,200. How do you want to respond to this? And they can insist on the three or they can get Mike to drop the three to two and a half or they can do whatever, right? Depends on the, what they want to do. Um, uh, Karen. Karen, your mute's on. Got it. Um, we had to do this for years in Maine with the buyer broker agreements. And one of the things that, and what the lawyers end up telling us here, that when you are have your buyer broker agreement, it says you're going to get your 3%, your 2%, whatever. We could not put in the contract that the buyer's fee was going to be paid. We had to just roll it in as seller concessions because it's a bilateral contract and it legally would not stand up if you made yourself a third party to that contract. So the seller basically wouldn't know what those seller concessions were for. The buyer could use it for anything, whether it was, you know, their building inspection or paying their realtor. 
So that way it wasn't a big red flag to the seller on the other side about why am I paying more? Because it really depended on the listing side, what kind of conversation they had with their seller, which not every listing agent was very good at. Right. And that's, that is um, probably going to be the case here because that's still law, uh, third party to third party. Um, but that's what we're going to do. So we're going to put it in as a concession or whatever, but they still owe the money. Uh, the buyer brokerage agreement, I believe, is also going to. So another thing that the lawyer talked about yesterday is a real estate attorney yesterday. Um, and you guys, we've had her on here before, um, talked about um, talked about recording the agreement as well. So you can record your buyer brokerage agreement um, to make sure that you get paid. Makes it much more enforceable. What do you mean record? Uh, record it with the county or oh. jurisdiction that they're in. Yeah. So it goes where the property is. Um, it makes it easier to enforce. Um, Daryl, thank you, Karen. Karen, that's very. I think you. I don't think you could be more correct. I think that is going to be what we have to do. Daryl, I still don't get what you just said. Record. Explain that. What do you mean record? Uh, I, wish I, I wish I knew more about it. But you record it with the county. You record it like you do any document, any contract. You can record. Um, so you record a buyer's agreement as like a deed or as a record. It's, on a, the property? it's a record. It's a contract that can be recorded, and that money is owed to you. Who, who, where, who, what who would you record it? I'll, I'll get you more details on how to do it, but you do it okay. with the property. I don't you explain that. Is it, it going to become containing. like a lien on the property or something? If uh, we record it? It's, it's like a contractor's lien is what Vivian said, but I, I believe that's to be true. Um, I've never heard yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brian said he had an attorney suggest recording with the county. Yes. That's how you make sure you get paid. And like contractors do when they do a yes. job on the house. Yes, that's, it's money that's that's legally owed to you. That's a legally binding document. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about this all the time when when, when uh, buyers and sellers try to get out of contracts and stuff like that for mm -hmm. no reason and just they no, they, you're adults and this is a legally binding contract. And, so would you record it prior to closing? Yes. And then that way you're getting well, paid at well, closing. Gretchen is on here. She re recommends recording the agreement. And Gretchen's a, a real estate attorney. So thank you, Gretchen. Uh, but how can we record it against the property? The property is not on buyer's name yet, right? They you record against the buyer, but it'll go against the property. Okay. I believe that's how it uh, how that works. Maybe uh, Gretchen can pipe in. Exactly, Gretchen says. Okay. So it's regarding the property. It's signed by the buyer, but it's regarding the property. Okay. But guys, you're going to make sure that it gets covered at um, recording documents. Is is I think less than twenty five bucks or something. It's not very much. Um, and actually, that wasn't my question. <laughs> I just had to well, comment there. When, okay, but I, I want to, I, I did want to address that. Um, you're going to be asked by the title company before the money is split what to do. Before the money goes in, you're going to be asked about what is owed to you. So you're going to have a hard time getting cut out if you're on the ball for the closing. Um, go ahead, Daryl. Which actually, in my eyes this gives the buyer's agents a lot more leverage than what they had um say for instance you have a super strong buyer now which you some of us have done it in the past you know of course we we stress how how strong our buyer, but this even gives you more leverage in my eyes because you can really stress and really um if you're a buyer's agent work for your uh larger commission um you have a stronger buyer you, you you let the seller know and you document it which i kind of already do but i think it's even more but still i didn't really get any more commission now i can so my mind's just my wheels are working <laughs> that's all hmm. yeah it's uh that, that's that's what this is about there that's that's what happened with me that's why i sent out the email that i sent out let's let's adapt to this this change and attack it um but good agents will do great but you've not just good agents a lot of you guys are good agents but you're secret and nobody knows um you got to let people know how valuable you are you've got to let them know the things that you do there are a lot of people in life and you know people and you know the opposite of people so i i love this because it, it really it really is a microcosm of life lots of people are full of bluster and they do nothing and then there's people you know who bust their backs and they do everything they possibly can and don't get any credit or take any credit. You guys have got to be a little more blustery and you got to take some credit for the things that you do. Um, you got to actually do them, but you got to take the credit for the things that you do. 
Um, don't be, you know, I do this, I work so hard and blah, 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 and just complain privately. Let document the things that you do, document all the things that you've done. I bet if I sat down and had a, a coffee or a beer with you guys, you could all tell me stories of all the things you've done way, you've done way out of way out of your way for clients to help things happen. Um, some of you in other industries, you haven't been in real estate that long, but you did it in some other industry. You did it in some other aspect of your life. Document those things and and make them part of what I do. This is part of what I do for my clients. Make yourself as, uh, seem as valuable as you actually are. And if you're if you're not full of, I mean, I know it's not your personality, just like you guys are, some of you are afraid to post on Facebook and you, know, you don't want to seem salesy and this and that. Well, if you don't seem salesy, you're not going to have sales. You're, you're going to have to, this is more and more, it's not just about, a lot of you guys have been decent buyer brokerage, uh, decent buyer agents, because you've done a million things. You've showed them a million houses. You've worked your butt off for them. You've done this, you've done that. You've met the the uh, the appraiser and you've met the inspector and you've met this and done this and met with the lender and helped them fix their credit and you've done all this stuff for them. And so you've done okay as a buyer's agent. You could have done so much better in this market telling people what you're doing. Tell it, let them know how good you are. Let them know how hard you work. But you guys, some of you don't want to be salesy. Well, guess what? You're going to go broke. You've got to be, especially now, you're going to, you'll be meek in this market when they're not offering you, you know, whatever, two and a half percent minus 395. You're, you're, you better be strong and you better ask for what you're worth. And, and you better believe what you're worth. Um, Karen, your hand is still up. I think it's by accident. Um, I'm going to go with Palak. Hi Ryan, can you can you guys hear me? Uh, if you maybe louder or something. Uh, can you hear me now? Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, sorry, my microphone. Okay, so I do have a question based off what I believe Karen mentioned. Um, like instead of um, writing on the contract that um, the sellers gonna pay, like if I'm the one making an offer, right? As a buyer's agent, the sellers gonna pay me. 3% or whatever, um, ask them to pay instead as like buyer's concessions, maybe like 30 grand, and then present the buyer's um, broker agreement directly to the title so they can account for funds, no? You don't have to send that to the to the, the people. You can just tell title, but if you want to present it, you can. Um, okay. They're not going to ask for it. They're going to ask you how much you're getting. Um, okay. And who's but paying then, for it? And you'll tell them the buyer's paying for it out of these concessions. Well, with uh, that, and then, and then so, so yeah, that's exactly what you'll do. I'm not an attorney, and I don't know how this is going to shake out if they're going to oh. make us do this. Mm -hmm. But that's exactly what I think they're going to make us do as concessions, which you're just going to put on there as concessions. Okay. And then, uh, not going to always be comfortable. You're going to have to be strong because they're going to now. Now the buyer gets an inspection. And they want real concessions on something else, right? Other mm -hmm. concessions. Now I've got to go back to that to that uh, seller and say, "Well, uh, we need five thousand dollars for this." And they say, "Well, mm -hmm. we're giving you thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars." And you say, "Well, that's not for that." Okay, but then that brings me to the next question because the reason I ask is um, because of the loan guidelines. Um, it's going to have a max depending on the loan type and then how much down payment the buyer is going to bring. So once you hit the max, that's where like it would it might get challenging, like wording, like yeah, say yeah, absolutely. So lenders think that there's going to be exceptions. So we've talked to some lenders. I've seen lenders on things. I think there's going to be some changes in what they can do and can't do. So uh, for now, any kind of like concession concession that's going from one party to say the buyer like whether it's going from the lender or the realtor like someone's contributing towards the closing costs whatever it has to be disclosed um to all the parties so i'm assuming if that's the case then the buyer's broker agreement might have to be disclosed to the title the lender everybody it needs to be um, disclosed to the lender for sure it doesn't have to be disclosed to title but it needs to be disclosed to the lender well, um, I, title. If you tell title that the buyer is paying you three percent of that, and then the buyer doesn't never disagrees with that, mm -hmm. which if they do, then you can present your buyer broker agreement. Okay, um, gotcha. Like just like you do the three fifty now, the three fifty or the one seventy five, you guys are doing that, and you just tell them. Uh, typically, you have you either have the uh, affiliated business disclosure signed mm -hmm. or you don't, and you just tell title, yeah, my buyer is paying me three fifty okay. also, mm -hmm. um, and title. And title says okay, and they put it on the on the settlement statement. 
if the buyer doesn't squawk and they, you just get it, if the buyer does squawk, you say, oh, remember you guys signed this where you owe me 350, you owe my brokerage 350. So okay. that's everybody give me a head nod on that. That's how that works, right? Mm -hmm. But we need to tell them though you don't send the title company the, the affiliated business. Mm, okay, but we do need to let the title know if the the payment for like the buyer's broker is not coming directly from the seller, but rather it's coming as buyer's concession, and then they of need course. to account yeah. for for the agent's commission from that concession, right? Of course. Mm. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And and if you if you want to present your buyer's broker agreement, you can. You just don't. They're not going to require it. They're not going to ask you most of the time. Um, if you tell them yes, the buyer's paying me twenty four thousand dollars in in commission, and the buyer says, "What is this twenty four thousand dollars?" Then they might. They're definitely going to ask for your buyer broker's agreement at that point, right? Um, Christine. Okay, unmute myself. So, okay, so I, I came in at 11, so I apologize if I missed some of this. It's sounding like a couple, my main question was this. I have, um, having a having a great week and a, uh, having a VA appraisal came in well below contract price, and I have the buyer. That deal is effectively dying. Um, and I guess there's just probably not an answer for this at this point, other than if the seller's, you know, agent doesn't offer um, any compensation, then we're just not going to, because I don't think the VAs can pay any sort of commission. Um, and then I, my other question was really pertaining to, I know you were mentioning about, you know, write it in as a concession. Um, I mean, are we, uh, aren't we like in certain loan, we're, 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 we're limited. I mean, are we able to do that? I guess is that's how we're, we're going to do it. We're just going to ask for our commission as a seller's concession. Um, and are we going to be able, let's say they needed actual closing costs. Are they able to are we able to do that and put closing costs and then our commission? And then, you know, my first question is, you know, I guess unless the Veterans Administration changes something, if the sellers aren't offering any compensation, the VAs can't offer any compensation, right? Okay. So the lender that I saw yesterday said that they expect the VA to change. They said VA is quick to adapt and they think that things are going to change because this seems to be an untenable situation with, with VA. Um, they don't think VAs are going to be represented, um, and they think lenders are going to lose VA deals. Um, yeah, I mean, just to so, just to kind of interject, like by by the okay, way, guys, this... I want, uh, we're getting a lot of lender questions and a lot of lender. Uh, here's I'll tell you about lenders. They're going to adapt because their business is going to be hurt too, and they're owned by banks, and they're going to lobby and they're going to adapt and they're going to make some changes to things that they can and cannot do, including the. Uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac stuff. Um, apparently, they have a ton of money too. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac do that have, they've stored up from charging investors and the high. Uh, they've been charging fees to extra fees to people with good credit and investors. So they have extra money uh, that they're saving for something, and they and the, the lender believed that they'll start using it for this kind of thing. So uh, what they do, I don't know. I think they'll start allowing VA to pay commission um, to enter buyer brokerage groups. Otherwise, how could you not? But yes, you're going to have to offer, you're going to have to put it in your contract. That's what we, we talked about, putting it in your contracts that you offer. I don't care what you're telling me that you're going to pay me. I just want to reiterate that for you guys. You have a listing and we're talking about in August, September, October, and, and from then on, you have a listing in MLS. I go to your website to see, I don't care what you're offering, 2%, 2.5%, whatever it is my offer to you is going to include three percent to to me effectively to me right you can call it concessions whatever you want but to cover my buy what my buyer owes me and i'm acting my buyer's best interest if i cover what they owe me through my offer however now we're talking about va where they're going to have to take less than you know at least you know two three percent less than uh appraisal and as we know, appraisals are not necessarily, uh, you know, going to be there all the time. So um, that's where we're at. And so that that situation seems untenable for lenders. Um, the lender that was on the presentation that I saw was convinced that they're going to be making a bunch of a bunch of changes. Um, big banks are, um, and they are. Big banks have some of the best lobbies, um, obviously better than the NAR. Um, and they're going to be making some uh, some adjustments. 
So I do, the, the, the simple answer is nobody knows the answer to that question. It is certainly a problem for VA um, where they absolutely can't pay anything. Um, you guys can't even get transaction fees from them. So, I mean, they can't pay anything. Um, yeah, I am. Um, go ahead. Yeah, and, and, and you know, and, and like I said, I mean, I, I, I know my stuff and so does everybody on this call. And I know it's not the listing agent's job to keep track of timelines, but it's just, it was such a perfectly illustrated example. And I made a little video about it in that um, the loan commitment, we were disputing the appraisal and it didn't turn out in our favor, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> and um, the loan commitment timeline came up and, uh, you know, I, I was on top of it and I got an extension and, you know, we're just going to, we're going to be able to walk with their deposit at this point. But, you know, listing agent was fully aware and didn't say a word. It's not her job to, but it just kind of like crystallized for me. It's like, <clears throat> you know, these veterans aren't real estate agents. So, you know, if I hadn't, the lender didn't say anything either. So, I mean, in this case, they would have just lost their, you know, sizable escrow deposit. So I hope, you know, I'm hopeful that they'll figure something else out because that's the type of thing that's going to happen if we're just, you know, we're not permitting them to even hire their own representation. Yeah. I would expect them to adapt They're, you know, they're, it's big business. Um, so if the money's there, they'll adapt. Um, Mike, You're on mute. There, there we yeah. go. Uh, yes, thanks. Uh, it, I have a question for Karen. Uh, are you still there, Karen? Her, her her screen was going up and down. I wasn't sure if she was still there. Because she's, uh, she's putting her hand up and down. Okay. I don't know there she is. Uh, there we are. There we are. With, with you uh, working outside of Florida in a different, uh, uh, you're used to, obviously, the, the commission structure and negotiating stuff like that and uh, due to the fact that all money uh, must be accounted for in the closing settlement statement did you ever have one side or the other come back and say wait a minute this is way out of line you're getting too much or i'm getting too little you ever have just curious about that no because you would sit down and you would have that conversation with your buyers when you met with them you would explain the representation in maine we always had to have written we we had a form three so we had to explain to people if you were a transaction agent a seller agent or a buyer's agent um and that was a form we had to go over with them for everything and then at that point you know you would sell yourself to sign them up as a buyer agent so you know like 99 percent of buyers if they had an agent there there wasn't transaction broken you always had a buyer's agent so it was the normal there and it was none of the seller's business or the selling agent's business what your commission was from that buyer because that was between you and the buyer sometimes the buyer would pay it out of pocket but most times we would try to work it into the contract as part of those seller concessions um, we did always have to check with the lender to make sure we didn't exceed the maximum amount like on an fha it could only be six percent so you would always have to work with the lender to make sure that fees worked within it or whether the buyer had to come up with that extra money on their own. Uh, excellent. Thank you. Well, it sounds like you already experienced and you're used to what we're going into. So uh, it, it's just a matter of getting used to things. And, and by the way, Christine, on the, uh, the VA question, that was a good question. I hadn't even thought about that yet. So thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's I'm, I'm just actively... Because they're talking about renting for a year now. And I'm like, well, <laughs> I'll still try to help them. But I'm like, I, you know, I guess, you know, it's just, it's just evolving, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Karen, you have a question. Sorry, got to keep putting that hand down. <laughs> okay. Uh, Palak. Yes, that brings me like to one current well, a concern that I have. So for now, um, conventional loans, if the buyers are putting less than 5% down, they're, they're capped at like max 3% concessions. Um, that might turn out to be, I don't know how to, I'll try to rephrase it. Let's say um, the agreement between me and my buyer is to pay 3%. Um, now, surprise, um, the roof needs replacement. The sellers agreed to like the 3% max concession, which was supposed to go to me as um, my commission. But then um, with the roof replacement, that's coming out to say like another 15 grand. Um, the sellers like I'm paying 
I agreed to the 3% and then the lender's going to come back saying you can't cross over that 3%. So then that kind of like, and then the buyer's like, I don't have any money. And then you're back to like having to settle for like less commission, I guess. Um, I mean, it's just going to have to be like, I don't know how the seller or seller's going to put more because like by the loan limits, they can't contribute more. Okay. Alec, um, that's what, that's exactly what the lender was talking about yesterday was the 5%, um, conventional, um, and how they're going to have to make changes to that because yeah, I mean, it would the there's, loan there's also ways that lenders can, can Yeah. That's can what I'm that. asking. Like, uh, would and, the guidelines and, need to be changed then? Let me go to Karen real quick. I bet Karen is raising her hand about this. Okay, so a repair that comes up from an inspection is not a concession. That was always treated as a separate matter the way we used to do it. And so it's because it's not necessarily going to the buyer. It can go directly to the roof company. It can be held in escrow at the at the title company so that they pay it when the work's completed if it's done after closing. So it was nothing that interfered with the guidelines for the mortgage companies awesome thank you karen yep that's what the lender was saying there's other ways to to classify things and and do things um i want to talk to you guys uh now we don't have any hands up for a second i want to talk to you guys about um a an additional uh brokerage that we are uh putting under our flagship of fri and that is a thompson brokerage um a thompson brokerage um allows you to be part of the mls without being part of the national uh, state or local board of realtors um so you do not have to pay them you do not have to uh, abide by their rules um you you still have to be legal and ethical but you do not have uh those fees um and you do not have to participate with them so if you have any uh questions about that now would be a great time to ask them um but that will be starting very soon uh yes daryl and we cannot call ourselves realtors correct you can call yourself a licensed real estate agent there you go thank you um christina so yeah i guess i'm you know i'm interested i'm just kind of curious i don't know trying to figure out how that would work. I mean, I guess we're, we're still, are we still, we're still able to use like, well, I guess we wouldn't be, um, can we still use the Florida realtor contracts? I guess if we're, if we're a Thompson broker. You can get those. Okay. You can get those. That's a great question. You can get those. Um, you can get those from uh, any title company. We'll let you get them. Um, you'll also have transaction broker or transaction desk on your MLS account, but, uh, you can get those. You could; those are readily available online. There's no one's going to stop you from using those forms, and people are going to actually request that you use them. So, uh, you might as well use them. Um, John, so so yes, they're copyrighted, but they're they're also readily available. John, yeah, Ryan. So if we uh, partake in this Thompson brokerage and we're not part of NAR anymore, can we offer compensation in the MLS? No, that's MLS rule. Okay, okay. Stuff to abide by MLS rules. Okay. Yes, uh, Carolina. Okay. You're muted, Carolina. Uh, would the name change? Like we use Florida Realty Investments. Would it be Florida Realty Investment Thompson Agency, or how does how would that work? That's and a great question. Let me answer that one, then I'll get you to part two. Okay. Um, Yes, those of you right now who have been on the referral brokerage before or um, or on it now, um, you are all DBA, Florida Realty Investments, whether you know this or not, you are Law, Law Hunt Enterprises, LLC, or you are Law Hunt Enterprises 2, LLC, which is a referral brokerage, two different brokerages. Uh, this one is Law Hunt Enterprises 4, um, and it will be DBA, Florida Realty Investments. And yes. And okay. would that change our agreement or would we need to do a different agreement based on this new way of doing business? 
Uh, the agreement that you have with us now uh, in many places references the code of ethics, the uh, NAR, FAR, all those things. We will have a different agreement for the other brokerage. Um, and actually, uh, the rule is we actually have a different. Uh, Carissa is not the broker of that. It'll be Chris's father who's the broker of that. You cannot be the broker of an of a board member brokerage and of a Thompson brokerage. So, how, what would happen then? How how would you just a new agreement when you? I mean, it hasn't started yet. It's going to be a couple of weeks. Um, so everyone would switch over. Or? No, 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 no. It's completely up to you. Ah, okay, so then there's different agreements being part of this versus. Right. Okay, okay. Correct. I don't know if you guys remember when you signed the original paperwork with us. You had two boxes. You could be either a, a board member or a referral agent. Uh, a lot of you've been here long enough to not remember that. Um, but you could have done either one. Um, and so we're not just adding another box to that agreement. We have a, we're a separate agreement. Um, for now, it looks like all the all of our fees and stuff will be the same. Everything will be the same. We'll treat you all the same. Um, Christina. I think I just didn't take my hand down. Sorry. Okay, Benjamin. By the way, why are you doing this? Um, the this this brokerage. Uh, there seems to be some general dissatisfaction with some of the associations and representation. Um, you know, we had one angry agent on on the internet posting about it. Don't look at him. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, um, I'm just kidding. That's that wasn't the that was not the catalyst for it. But uh, the um, <laughs> we're we're doing it we're doing it to to make people happy. Um, I, I think that uh, there is some general dissatisfaction with with some of the representation and some of those things. Um, and I don't think they really offer that much. Um, great question. I want to go ahead and answer this. Uh, Donna, that is the other um, issue with this is Supra. Uh, I do believe that you will have super access, that you can get super access. Um, Benjamin. Yeah, um, my question was back on the other topic, so I don't know if I should ask. No, go ahead. Now. No, go ahead. Okay, uh, so <clears throat> let's say I'm representing the seller. The buyer is going to come in with an offer, and on the offer, he's going to sp specify the percentage of commission. Yes or no? Uh, it sounds like uh, no. I, I uh, no. You'll specify the concession, but you'll put it in the amount of the of the commission. So you'll oh, say okay, so, concession. Yeah. So they'll okay. So they'll they'll say whatever seller uh, concession they want. Right. Yes. Okay. And then, sure. so when I talk to the, I talk to the, the seller, we agree, let's say they're asking for uh, 3% and we agree to two and a half or we agree to a three, whatever. So it, it goes right back. The answer goes on a counter offer or on the same document that the offer came in. Uh, and it's just that the writing it doesn't way. say commission, but it always say sellers, seller concession. Right. You can do it either way, though. You can do it uh, just like you would now, just like if you're arguing the price, just like you're countering the price. It, you know, so you have a listing for for four hundred thousand dollars, and I offer you three ninety with three uh, percent seller concession. Okay. You can come back at three ninety five and two and a half, whatever you want. Right. And right, I can. But it Take that to my it can be written, So it'll be written on. It can be written on the same on the same offer or now. on a counter offer. Right. You remember the market where where sellers were giving a lot of concessions. Not that you know was that seven or eight years ago. Sellers were giving a lot of concessions. Uh, a lot of offers you got said you know three percent toward buyers closing costs and prepaids. Um, uh, you'll do the same thing, and you could argue it back then, and you can argue it now. When I say argue, counter, you can counter it then, you can counter it now. Okay. okay. As um, long as we use the word seller concession, it's fine. Don't use the word I think so. I think so. Until further notice. I mean, you've got we've got we've got 105 days before this matters. So okay. I think so for now. Okay. Thank you very we'll much. Talk, we'll definitely talk about it a lot more before it happens. Um, Anthony. Yes. Yeah. Anthony, you're, if you're talking, you're on mute. Or you may raise your hand accidentally. Hi, sorry about that. I had a hard time getting it off uh, mute. 
Um, so I have, I have two questions. One is this ruling doesn't affect me a whole lot because I've only had a, a couple of listings over four years. But if we do resign from NAR, how does that affect our protection under this lawsuit? Well, you're done. The lawsuit's dead uh, as soon as it's as soon as it's accepted by the end of the year. Um, guys, there's no reason really to to hurry and join the Thompson brokerage. I mean, I, I would love for you to go ahead and do it um, to beat the rush. That's going to be at the end of the year when when your local board asks for payment again. Um, but for now, it doesn't matter. You're already a member of, uh, you know, you're about to pay your MLS, which you're going to have to pay anyway. Um, but you've already paid your board for the your, your, your NAR FAR and your local board for the year. Um, so it won't really matter until the end of the year. So you might as well, well that, not jump. But um, well, that, well, that brings me to my, my second question. I'm sorry. Yeah. So is this something that we b before we pay our MLS dues in, in May? Is this a change we have to make before we renew? Absolutely not. No, MLS is going to be MLS. That's not going to change for you. You're still okay, going to pay I, for well, Will the fees with MLS be any higher if we're uh, under the new brokerage? Not in Stellar, they're not. Um, okay. I have heard that there are some uh, some of the smaller associations and stuff that that do charge more, but um, not in Stellar. And, and how does the new brokerage get around not having to be part of, of NAR? It's a Thompson brokerage. You can look that up at Thompson brokerage, uh, what it is. It started in the 90s. Um, it was a group in Atlanta, a bunch of brokerages banded together and sued um, because they were uh, being forced to join a board and they thought it was uh, extortion to make you join a board to get MLS. Um, and they sued and they actually won. Um, it is only legal in Florida, Georgia and Alabama. OK, yes, I, I did have my uh, Georgia license. I even posted that on our uh, one of the Facebook uh commentary because yes in, in georgia i i was not a part of nar but did have full mls access right i saw that and, and i and i and i commented that we can't do that here um because you have to have a separate brokerage for that and right which, which i understood which we, which we now do okay when i say now in the next it's in the process um, I, I will say i will say i, I don't know if any thing will change as far as our MLS fees, but but in Georgia, there was no annual MLS fee, but they charged on a per transaction basis, and it was actually very high. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, just for example, on a two hundred thousand dollar sell, they they charge you at closing, and uh, it was a couple hundred dollars just for one sell. Mm -hmm. Yep whole different whole different thing so i think that's where that whole mls fee thing started in, in our mls in the uh, compensation thing because uh, a lot of states do charge mls fee um but we don't hear so it's just nonsense here um uh are you all good anthony's answer your questions yes thank you all right monica um so this is my first meeting and i missed you know prior conversations about thompson brokerage so what I'm getting from this conversation is that we don't need to be part of the local realtor boards like Aura and, and you know National Association of Realtors, but we still need to have MLS membership and pay MLS dues. Is that right? If, if you want to be on that broker. So now we have all three options. Now you can be a, a regular realtor like a lot of you are, most of you are, which is you pay your, your NAR, FAR and local board and MLS and you're a full blown realtor. You can be Thompson, which is just MLS, or you can be a referral agent, which is nothing. So you can pay nothing. You can pay for the MLS, or you can pay for the board and MLS, and each of those comes with different levels of, of service. Um, I hope that answers your question. Yes. But that's what, you. Yes. So, so you wouldn't say, so, if you, so when you contact me and say, I want to move from this one to that one, just say, I want to move to the one that pays this and doesn't pay that, and I'll send you the right paperwork. Got it. Right? Okay. That okay. has this and doesn't have that, and I'll send you the right paperwork. Perfect. Um, yes, Paula. So, um, just to understand this better, so right now, members who have the MLS access, they get the Supra, or is it through the um, association? So right, now through the board. right now, it's through the association, it's through the board. Okay. And um, so, we are. Uh, 
I, I'm trying to figure out exactly because I've seen Thompson brokerages have uh, super key access. Okay. So I'm trying to I'm trying to find out how that's done. So that, we're in the process of doing that. Yeah, that would be my biggest concern. Well, for... okay, but we're also going to an environment where the that, this is part of this too, where the listing agent isn't offering you anything uh, sometimes. Okay. And so are you going to open that door for me or not? And they're going to have to open the door for a lot of buyers, a lot of this and that. It is also, uh, I have an article that is, uh, that says that you cannot, it is a violation for you to have something on MLS and not offer access to everyone. You're not doing your seller. It's not because of the, of the board member rules or ethics. It is because you are, it's because of ethics. You're not doing the best job for your seller if you're not allowing everyone access. So. Well, Every but licensed then, agent should have access. Every real estate professional should have access to your listing. It is, oh. it is, you are not doing the best you can for your seller. And I've long thought this about that, which is why I've used coded lock boxes and just use showing time. By the way, you also have showing time as a Thompson number. Um, showing time. Oh, okay. Time. So showing times available, just not the um, Supra. Probably. For now, I don't know about the Supra. Okay. Know about Supra. Um, okay. But you'll know later on when the thompson thing comes yes back, yes right? i will i'll know very shortly um okay, thank you. but it, it but it is argued and there's been a, a, a the person who who was in charge of the the super uh the super keys has has made written an article that they don't think they can make you that you need to you need to provide access to your listing no matter what um, because that's in the best that's in the best interest of your seller um Ida. um yes Thompson Brokerage, do they uh, do the uh, yearly convention as, you know, Florida Realtor, NARS, conventions, stuff like that? I would not think so. They don't have anything to sell. So I wouldn't think so. Very good. <laughs> well, you know, those aren't mandatory. <laughs> It's not mandatory. It's nice because, uh, I, I, you know, it's a nice place to gather and sure. kind of uh, meet other agents and build sure. that relationship with across the board with you know uh global sure. agents and so forth but i think sometimes it can get very costly you know you go to all of this stuff sure of course of course um tammy so the which i don't use it really but show amy you know, where you get an agent to go open a door for you and they have the buyer broker agreement thing, that's probably not going to work. How so? Well, if I have a buyer broker agreement with somebody, but I mm -hmm. need them to go see another house and I'm tied up and I call show Amy, I guess they just have them sign something at the door. I don't know. There, There is such a thing as a showing agreement. Are you guys familiar with that? Uh, it was no. last... It was last updated in 2006, but it does a lot of the same thing that a buyer brokerage agreement does. And it is hidden on your transaction desk um, or your form simplicity. Um, I almost was going to go over it today. I can show it to you. So they would fill out you. You would you would make that agreement between the showing agent and me, like me and the other showing agent. Or uh, yeah, so so I don't I don't know I don't know how that yeah. is. I don't know how Shawami is going to work, but I did want to go over this this showing thing because I can show you a house for five hundred dollars or for two hundred dollars or for fifty bucks. Um, you know, Mister Mrs. Buyer, you want to be uh, you want to you want to be coy about signing this buyer brokerage agreement? Fine, I'll show you a house for five hundred bucks, or I'll show you these you know these five houses that you want to see for two hundred bucks each. You know, I'll make a thousand bucks on a Saturday morning whatever you guys want to do, you know? So that's something too. You guys can sell your services. You've always been able to do this. This is opening a lot of eyes to things you guys always have been able to do. Uh, and some things you haven't been able to do, like set your own buyer's side commissions. So this is a, I mean, put your happy face. This is a, this is a, this is, a, it's a, there's a big silver lining around this cloud that's got everybody else scared. And that's another silver lining is that everybody else is scared. But they've got a buyer broker agreement with me. And so how do you break that agreement? Or how can you sign another agreement with somebody else to show a house? You know, because you're, well, you, well, you're paying them to show the house. So I don't know. I don't that is know. true. Yeah. But I, but I don't know. So that's, yeah. that's a good thing. And then you know what? That's going to be. And this is another thing, like I talked about with lenders, they're going to adjust because they want to make money. Shawami is right. going to adjust because they want to make money. 
Right. So right. they'll have probably some separate agreement with you where they, you know, they have something that says that they, uh, because you're supposed to have a special agreement or a separate agreement with the buyer. Right. Can they show without a separate agreement to them? I don't know. Yeah. You know, that's something to be determined too. When do we have to have this form before we meet them, before the form signed, before we meet them, before we take them into a house, before we get a prequal, before we get this, before, you know, when is it due? It's mandatory, but what does that mean? You yeah. know, so there's a lot of stuff that's going to come out. Um, but I, I love this. Uh, everybody's thinking of different things, which is great. Um, Mike. Uh, yes. If we're listing agents, can we put the commission that we've agreed to with uh, the seller? commission for both sides can we can we put the commission of the buyer's agent in showing time no you cannot put it anywhere on mls or any attachment Nothing. okay Nothing associated with mls all right well there's not going to be any kind of thing like that and i i posted something and somebody wrote uh something funny like um you know 124 main street apartment three percent you know in the in the listing thing you know it's something like that and i put uh, and the realtor remarks how about you know seller is three percent motivated you know, something like <laughs> to get it across. Realtors will probably find some code of what they're offering to get across. Um, you know, give people enough people enough incentive to uh, to find a way, and they'll find a way. Um, so uh, there's just uh, you know, this yard needs to be cut three times a week, two and a half times a week. Um, so you know, we'll figure out something. I'm sure, but you're not supposed to, and you definitely can't just write it in the anywhere and the, the people ask questions about attachments this and that of course not no they will not allow you can't get it across on you cannot blatantly get your point across on mls for that what, what whatever code we work out we'll see um <laughs> yes talking like in a war um it is a war out there but you guys are you guys are equipped for it you're adapting and you're going to attack in this war um because you know what to do and you know, you, but the main thing you guys need to do is prove your value, um, and and do that, guys. There's a lot of people out there saying right now. Uh, you guys have seen it. If you get into social media, and I I urge you not to get into these comment sections and rabbit holes on all the negativity and nonsense out there. There's so many people uh, saying they're swearing they'll never work with buyers again. You know, this is nonsense. Great, more for us, more for us that know what we're doing, more for us who who aren't afraid to ask for what we're worth both on our buyer brokerage agreement and when it actually comes to negotiating and getting that money for the buyer um, from the seller. So um, there's that. Um, Christina, and I, I, another thing before we talk, but when you're doing a listing, I would let them know, look, we're going to offer, if you don't want to offer this buyer brokerage, anything, be, be prepared to see, you know, people ask for 3% concessions anyway. Um, you, we're we're going to pay it one way or the other. Um, Christina. So my question is like, for example, I know I, I would, I hope that, you know, Fannie and Freddie, because when I'm asking, you know, lenders, I'm hearing federal and, you know, and, and the VA administration. So, so, so for example, let's say in July, I'm still helping this buyer. Let's say they, they're still looking um, and nothing has been decided where they can pay me a commission. Uh, do I put something in front of the seller before I show that home or am I just negotiating? You know, I mean, like if we're in a situation like that with a veteran, for example, um, and there's no adjustments that are allowing them to even pay me if they want, since they pay, can't pay, pay commissions currently. Like, I mean, am I putting something in front of the seller? Like, you know, off. No, I, I still, you still have to have your buyer brokerage agreement, which you'd still put 3% on. But um, they can't. They, you can check their website for what they're offering, or you can call them and say, what are you guys offering? Um, or you can just submit the offer with 3% on there. Yeah, but I mean, like a VA buyer can't pay me. I can, I'll have the agreement, but they can't pay me any commission. That's going to be that's that's going to the seller's going to have to pay you. Right. So, do my my question is like, I mean, can I send something and get that in writing before we? Yeah, with commission agreement for sure. Okay. Yeah, absolutely, commission agreement. That's just those are still going to be a thing, Daryl. Something's got to happen with VA because it's hard enough to get a VA buyer approved, even through the seller. The sellers don't want to accept because they're hundred percent financing. They're looking at that financing. They're like, why would I go with someone, you know, even though they're a veteran, people think that way. Why would I go with someone with hundred percent financing when there's plenty of people out there, not plenty, but enough with five, 10, 20% down. So they've already faced that hurdle to get through. Now they've got this other hurdle. So they've got to figure out something. I, I wouldn't. 
I, I couldn't agree more because what I think when I see a 20% down versus a 5% down is when the inevitable hiccup comes up, this 20% person can swallow it. And this 5% person is going to send me a cancellation. Right. I mean, that's what, that's what happens. So when the rate lock doesn't hold or the, or the, they need, you know, $3,000 for this or 2000 for that, or, or somewhere in underwriting, something little comes up and they got to put more money down. It happens all the time. You guys know from representing buyers, you guys know that happens from listing. You guys know that happens. And what do you always get with the FHA or the 5% down or the, or the hundred percent down, you get a cancellation. I mean, that's the thinking, right? Um, Christina, do you have a question? Your hand's still up. I see you posted something in uh, in chat, but your hand's still up. Do you have a question? Um, yeah, I'm just I'm posting it. There was an article, and I think it was like the CEO of like Premier Sotheby's, but he he did an op ed in um, a St. Petersburg paper. I'm posting that there, and then because I'm just seeing comments in the chat from you know like hey, it's getting really frustrating with all the misinformation and the clickbait headlines and a lot of negativity, and and you know people are like the sky is falling. You know, um, and to speak to, you know, somebody was on the call, um, I think it was Karen saying that, you know, they, they you know, in Maine, they would do this. And I'd have a, a social media realtor friend in, um, you know, in Washington, and she's like, we already have to do buyer broker agreement. So this article I like because it outlines some, some viewpoints and it kind of cuts through the BS. I posted a video about it on my Instagram, if everybody wants to go look, you know, just kind of saying, hey, here's a reality. It's the difference between a dollar and zero dollars in the MLS. And like people are still, people are not going to work for free. You know, uh, we owned a flat fee brokerage, my, my parents did in the 80s and 90s. And, you know, they sold it because people, generally speaking, prefer to have somebody you know, give them full representation and service. So I like that article, check out the video I posted. And and yeah, I mean, I'm just, for me, I'm just like, I'm just tuning out all the negativity because it's not helpful. You know, there's a lot of people who are going to be like that sky is falling mentality. And it's just like, I just can't take that in every day. I'm just tuning it out. I'm not engaging with the people that are, you know, taking this opportunity to be afraid and just negative because it's, it's just not going to be, it doesn't serve any purpose. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Um, Agreed. Thank you, B Benjamin. Um, asked in chat, uh, can they still share seller concessions in the realtor remarks? I guess you. I'm assuming you mean. Uh, as of now, yes. I don't know, what, and I think that's going to be the code for now, because typically, I mean, if you go look on MLS right now, it doesn't say a lot of people are offering seller concessions. Um, so I think that might be the the code uh, for that, but uh, we'll see. Um, and that might, and and we'll see if they if they allow that too, because that's probably the most obvious code for it. So we'll see if they allow that as well. Um, going forward, and again, there's so many rules that they've got to change so much stuff. This is, you know, like the thing they did last year with the foreign buyers and, and with no direction. And then this thing with no direction yet. Um, so we'll see how that, that works. Um, any other questions or comments before we go? Yes, Carolina. I got an e. Well, never mind. It was about NAR. We're not gonna be with them, so I don't need to. I'm. I don't need. Yeah, I want. I want to be clear. We're still gonna be with. We have a brokerage still with NAR, far in the local board and MLS. Uh, okay. You're, you're not gonna have to be in that one if you don't want to. So the question was gonna be, uh, well, I got this email about doing a class that was free for buyer's agent certification or yes, something? I remember that class, yes. You can take that class, I would take it. It's another okay. more letters to put next to your name. It's free, if you got time, do it. You learn something. Another thing to put on your buyer's presentation when you go see them is, look, I'm I'm certified in this. Uh, Mike's okay. not certified in this. That guy doesn't know what he's doing. You know, whatever you wanna do, don't attack Mike personally. But you just say, say I got, I took the time to get certified in this. I know what I'm doing in this, in this environment, right? So get that, put it on your list of, of how great you are. Put it on your resume. Be a peacock on those things, um, because you got to stand out from the crowd now. You can't just outwork people. And you're so nice, and you show me so many houses. You've got to be aggressive salesperson and put it on your, you know, put it in with your contracts and and demand your three percent, no matter what they're offering. Um, Jean. Uh, you might be muted still. I don't know where you went. Um, Christina. 
Yeah, I, I hopped on a Tom Ferry call about this last week, and uh, one tip I thought he was good uh, to say was, um, you know, take this opportunity to just send your the people that you know, your past clients, your friends, like, hey, do you have uh, a text? Or, you know, basically he's saying, send everybody a text, reach out and say, hey, do you have 10 minutes for, you know, a quick business call, you know, five or 10, and then, um, you know, get them on the phone and just say, hey, you know, so all these headlines, what questions do you have? Or, you know, I thought what Daryl posted about, you know, taking a client out to a local restaurant, but that's great. Just maybe just start, you know, connecting with your, your clients and just asking them what questions that they have um, and like lean on the people that support you anyway. And because, um, you know, I had uh, I have a closing tomorrow and uh, I took them out to celebrate and they asked me. And so um, I thought that was a great idea. Reach out to your past clients and your, your sphere and just ask them what questions they have and, um, you know, and just kind of. Explain it to them. Fantastic. I think people know more about Kate Middleton and B. Diddy than they know about this NAR thing. Um, and uh, and I think they're and they're a lot more interested in those other things than they are this NAR thing. Um, and I think we're the less that people are up in arms about it, the better. Um, I don't think they understand it. I think they just think that, uh, you know, and, and if they didn't have 25 realtors on their their social media posting about it all the time, they wouldn't know about it. Um, they pay just as much attention as they do uh, all these other things. So, um, well, less attention than they pay all these other things. So um, that's that. Uh, thank you very much for that, Christina. And and you're right, it's always a great time. I love that you made the video about it, by the way. Um, and especially love it because you're saying the same thing that I did, it's always $1, now it's $0. Um, and I, uh, it's always a great time to reach out to your clients. Always, any excuse to reach out to your clients is great. If they have questions about this, whatever information they're getting it, whether they're getting it from a politician, as we saw earlier, or their friend, or someone at the hair salon, or whatever, it's uh, the barbershop, it's going to be false information. It's going to be most likely, uh, you know, faulty information. And, you know, uh, I, I happen to disagree with, with, some of the politicians, I don't think you should cut your commissions to help other people uh, as your all your other bills go up. Uh, I think you should just keep giving great service, maybe give even better service and charge the same commissions or in some cases more. Stand up for yourself, attack, charge what you're worth and make the seller pay it. Right. So and it may not be a fight at all. You may you may, you know, the, if the if the seller the seller may respond and say, "Hey, my listing agreement already says I'm paying you three percent." Oh, great! You know, so check out their commission, but it doesn't matter what it says. I was I was I was making a point, being hyperbolic when I said, "Don't check, don't ask what the commission is. You demand what your commission is." Well, if they're offering it, take it. Um, you know, but and get it in writing, obviously, because we don't have any way to know it. So make sure it's in writing. Oh, another thing about the websites. One thing I do not like about that. I can change a website after you send me an offer and I put on there, I'm offering 4% and you send me an offer and I change it to 1%. I can't do that on MLS. They track keystrokes. They can tell every change I've ever made on there. They can't tell, tell the changes on my website. Uh, if you get a screenshot of my website, I don't know. It looks like AI changed it to me. You, you did that. You know, I can argue that with you. So make sure, and then you've got to, hire a lawyer and get after my listing agreement to see if I'm telling the truth or not. Or maybe I was blustering about it to start with. Just make sure you don't get scammed. Make sure you don't get cheated. Uh, people will do that. I've seen people do it on MLS and MLS has had to go through the records and, and see that they changed the commission after they took the bonus off after the offer was made and accepted. So uh, some of you guys have been involved in that because uh, it's been at FRI. Some of you guys have been involved in that. Um, so make sure that you're protected, get it in writing. Um, but I like to put it in the put it in the contract. You can put it in the contract now. Uh, seller is paying per per listing agreement. Seller is paying um, Tammy Pipkin at FRI three percent. Okay, use your name, not Tammy. Yes, Monica. Monica. Okay, uh, Jean, you have your hand up. You might be on mute, or you might have accidentally raised your hand. All right. Um, okay, guys. Uh, any other questions before we go? 
Awesome. All right. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Uh, I think this is going great. If you have questions about anything we talked about today, let me know. Uh, I hope you guys are excited, though. I want you guys to be excited. This is an opportunity. Adapt. Attack. Get your money. Earn your money. Show them what you're worth. Prove what you're worth. Be the best agent out there. Uh, you guys can certainly do it. I appreciate you all. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it.